Hello and welcome. My name is Libby Kosterman. Uh, today I'm joined by Florence Padman from Padman Healthcare. Florence is the Executive Director of Nursing at Padman Healthcare. Hi Florence. Hi Libby. Thanks for joining us today Florence. Um, perhaps you could, ta could start with telling us just a little bit about Padman Healthcare. Yes, certainly. Um, Padman Healthcare commenced in November of 1984, so this year we complete 30 years in operation as um, aged care providers. Uh, it was commenced by myself and my husband um, as, uh, I guess, a business venture to give me freedom to flexibility in the workplace because I had a 20-month-old child. and. Oh. Uh, that wasn't very flexible, um, but we commenced um, operation in a 25-bed home in Henley Beach in, in Adelaide and uh, learned a lot of what we know about the care needs of elderly um, from the, those very early days. Um, and I had a very good uh, clinical manager who taught me a lot about the uh, I guess sensitivity with which you need to look after elderly people. Uh, my position prior to that was as a nurse educator at the Royal Adelaide Hospital in the hospital based uh, training program for nurses. So um, I found that a little bit easier having had the education background to manage an aged care facility. Um, from that early beginning, we then grew to become the largest private provider of aged care services in, um, in Adelaide uh, and with one home in Queensland. Um, I guess our growth in the last few years has been fairly rapid in the extra services market. So we built new homes, um, very much upmarket homes, to really meet that market. So that's where we started. Um, but we also um, decided that to provide good um, care workers, we needed to grow our own. So we commenced our own registered training organization in 2008 and that allowed us to really train um, care workers in both Certificate 3 and 4 in aged care and community care as well as in leisure and health. And the feedback we've had from our managers and across all of our homes is that the quality of care workers coming out of our own R2 was far better than from industry-wide. Mm. Uh, we also started our own agency, nursing agency, um, to have some consistency and uh, competent staff to service just our own um, homes um, as well. Um, the other initiative we took on was a building company to do the smaller projects within our own um, business needs. Um, and both Viv and I have had a very active involvement with the industry, uh, peak bodies both at state and uh, federal uh, level. And that has kept us very much in touch with what the needs of uh, aged care has, has been and will continue to be. Um, so it gave us a good uh, basis to uh, plan our future developments and so on as well. Um, Thanks, Florence, for, for sharing that. It's quite a journey. Yes, yes. Um, and, and we remember you from the f very first focus group for the Aged Care Leadership Development Project in Adelaide in 2012. Yes. Um, and, you know, we're here today to talk about the, the outputs of that project. Um, and I, first of all, I just want to say it's great to see you still involved. Yes. And I'm, I'm curious as to, to why, you know, why have you, have you maintained your involvement in the Aged Care Leadership Development Project? I, I guess I've always had an active involvement, as I said, in the industry. And also, uh, we've been very uh, passionate about uh, aged care and I've put my energy into whatever I have done in the last years. And I guess aged care has been a big part of my life for the past 30 years, as I mentioned. And, um, and also, um, I, in my position on the board of our industry association for a couple of uh, for some years, 
and in a number of industry committees, I've always felt that there was some, I, I guess, uh, contribution I could make. Um, and education and development of leaders in aged care has always been close to my heart. And so I felt that when the opportunity came up to continue after that first uh, workshop, I thought that that was a worthwhile uh, project to be involved in. I, I guess the, um, the leadership capability framework was something that really interested me and I thought that there would be a lot of value in it and uh, where I could see it being used uh, you know, at the grassroots. Um, and so I felt that that was something that I would like to know more about and uh, use it um, in, the, in the way it was meant to be used and designed. And that's really what we want to, to talk a bit uh, about today, um, Florence, was, was, was the, this, this uh, leadership capability framework that's come out of the project. Um, it's been designed for, uh, to, to sort of describe the, the abilities and, and skills of leaders uh, across the sector at different levels. Yes. And there's a number of different ways that, that different organisations like Hadman Healthcare are using that capability framework. And so we're interested in um, in how you have used it. What what have what what have you done with it in in your organisation? Well, I looked at. I mean, it's a fairly not it's fairly um, sophisticated uh, framework, I think, and it takes a little bit of getting used to understanding the language and and being able to use use it to best advantage. And I think I the more I read it, the more I think I could do do more with it. But in the early stages, um, there are a few initiatives we've taken up, and I think uh, the the um, the key components of the framework, um, I think, is a good place to start. We looked at uh, using uh, the five uh, each of the five key domains, for instance, self, others, purpose, business, and change, and using the way that is broken down into the different components to um, reflect in a lot of our day-to-day -day documentation and, and I guess usage. I'll just give you an example, for instance. The use of the core domain purpose uh, requires the leader, for instance, to articulate and promote the organization, uh, to use their vision and mission and strategic direction. The key words are there and I think for anyone looking to use the, the key components of the framework, they can easily use the language that's already there to in 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 their um, uh, leadership um, framework. Um, for instance, I've been able to use the behavioral indicators in in this particular domain uh, purpose to review and improve the job descriptions for my for two levels, level two and level one uh, of my leaders in the organisation. Um, that's one thing, and uh, and I think that um, that really made uh, reading the job description a lot more clear for uh, the managers, um, and mm. and from that we developed an appraisal tool, or we um, I guess remodeled our appraisal tool for level two and level one managers, and that enabled a far more objective and a more detailed appraisal of the individual. Um, we've just commenced using it uh, on a couple of our operations managers and uh, they felt that that was far more um, positive. Um, and so, um, and, I, and I think that that's what I found useful to actually look at the, the key criteria using the um, domains and the descriptors underneath each domain. That, that sounds really... Um, uh... It sounds like it's been very helpful, and, and I'm just interested in whether you've um, whether you've actually targeted certain parts of the framework. I mean, as you say, it's quite sophisticated. It's also quite comprehensive. Yes. So, have you found that you've you've been able to sort of target certain areas and think, well, that's that's relevant, and maybe that bit isn't so relevant, so we, we won't look at that for now. That, that's exactly how we did it. We because it's it's there's a lot in in each of those domains and. I think if you look at what the role uh, of that particular person is in terms of their appraisal, um, you, you can't be all things to 
everyone. So we needed to look at, okay, yeah. where, what in this domain fits for this person's role. And I, and I think it depends on the seniority of the person and how big the scope of their work is, how much you include. And I think even if it is at a lower level of, um, say, a level uh, three person, uh, level three leader yes. or even a, a, a mentor at a care worker level who is still showing some leadership because they're mentoring someone under them. I think we can use the descriptors but modify them slightly to suit that role. I haven't tried it but I think it, it is very workable from you know my way of thinking. I think you can still use it um, uh, to, to articulate what you want. The, the descriptors under each of the four, or each of the domains enables you to describe, I think, what it is you expect from the leaders um, mm. at, at each level. And because the language is fairly clear and precise, and the behavioral indicators are not ambiguous, so, uh, and I think, I, I think just having done the job description and, and the appraisal too, um, I think it would be far more measurable and more objective. Previously, we've used um, uh, scoring, for instance, one, two, three, etc. Uh, one being excellent and, and so on. And I think whereas this makes it more measurable because you're actually describing each uh, area of performance uh, without saying number one. You know, it's when you number it, it's a fairly uh, I guess not not a very precise way of describing, and so I think it can I, be a bit arbitrary. That's right. That's right. So because some people think they're excellent, but it's, they're not excellent all of the time, and um, so this has been a bit easier to describe, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But we've just that's started, true. so I don't know how how much we we'll have to modify it further. So Florence, what else, um, are there other things that you've actually used the capability framework for? Yes, we, we, we have and some, um, a couple of other initiatives we um, are in the, in the process of uh, putting together but has, hasn't been completed yet. Uh, the first is we uh, run a um, training program at uh, Padman Healthcare on clinical leadership. So um, this is specifically targeted to clinical leaders that have been selected for their knowledge and skills, but also for their leadership potential. These are being trained as part of our succession planning for future management roles. So um, that's what we've started. The other is more like a graduate training program for um, RNs who have just started in aged care. Um, where we have an in-house training program so that they understand how to lead and manage and problem solve and so on. So we're including the leadership components into these programs so that they come out with not just a clinical decision making but also in leading and guiding staff under them. The third program is a management training program which is also a succession planning initiative for future non-clinical site managers in case we are not able to get are nurses as managers. Um, these uh, have been law or commerce graduates and we rotate them through a number of office functions so that they learn all of the aged care management in terms of administrative function and we are looking at using this the capability framework to do some leadership training in there as well. Uh, we have a mentor training program I mentioned earlier for senior care workers who support new carers to commence in, in the facility and the mentors are in, as part of their mentor training will have some of these leadership components included in it so that they can, um, they can uh, mature and grow to be good leaders. Um, and also at the industry level I have discussed it with the CEO of Laser SA about um, doing some further um, education um, and training for the industry and including this once the full manual and the tools come out to include um, leadership training for the industry at large. Um, so those are some of the other initiatives. 
Fantastic. Um, and you mentioned just before, Florence, um, about using the capability framework for to create job advertisements. Can you tell me a bit about that? Well, uh, for instance, we recently um, had to put an ad for a site manager. So I referred that to the, my HR manager to look at some of the key phrases within the domain uh, about, you know, just about um, clinical leadership as well as in terms of vision and mission and what we want in terms of the uh, values that we're looking for in someone to lead an aged care, uh, um, you know, to lead an aged care home. Um, so it just allows you to choose some important descriptors from the uh, um, tools that are there to be able to frame a good advertisement, right? rather than mm. um, rather than the same things that you see over and over again. Sorry? I think it's a refreshing way of looking at a, a role. Mm. Mm. And it gives you something to start with, doesn't it? So you're not actually having to just you know, come up with the That's words. Right. You can actually look through, and and, and what what tri what's yes. triggered, you yes. know, is is um is going to be relevant. Potentially. That's right. It, it, there are lots of very descriptive words there that really uh, you can select that best describes your organisation and what you're looking for. I think. Yeah. And and it can be different things to different people. I guess it depends on how they're going to use it. Exactly, and I think what you've what you've uh, um, sort of illuminated, Florence, is that, that that there's a number of different ways that that the capability framework can be useful, mm. um, and it really depends on you know what your organisation is trying to achieve, um, where you're at, what your focus is, um, you know what you're looking for in in your people in terms of their uh, Capabilities and their and their development, and I think you know you've just given some terrific examples of how how it can be used, um, and I yeah I appreciate you speaking with me today, Florence. Thank you. Hopefully that's been a bit useful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>